Greetings everyone! It's time to learn about one of the most powerful tools in Factorio. You might call this episode Fantastic Robots and how to use them. We're going to need a lot more power as we scale up our robot operation. And we can just add solar, but I think nuclear really fits well. It synergizes well with robots. So we're going to be building up robots and nuclear at the same time. And we'll get into the nuclear side of that equation in the next episode. But the robo port here, our key element for the robots themselves. Notice we have an orange square as we hover over this, and then a green square further on around that. In the right side there, supply area 50 by 50, that's the orange square. That's how far out your logistics robots can operate from your RoboPort. In the construction area 110 by 110, that's for the construction robots, so they have a much longer range. And then down below that in the electricity area, the robot recharge rate, four of them. So we have four robots at any one time that can recharge from a robo port, and if we have a lot higher traffic in an area, want to be able to deal with it simultaneously without the robots waiting, then we need more robo ports around to be able to handle that. We can also add more robo ports just to extend our range here. Notice the yellow dotted line. So if we come up this direction, it will last as far until you are no longer touching the supply areas like so and then we need to come back down if we want them to be connected and with this in place then any robot that takes off from either one of these robot ports can access the entire area but you don't want to go too far with this if for example you have a big factory and you have robot ports just connected up covering the whole thing which is a very natural new player thing to do then your robots are just going to fly all over the place and they are going to spend most of their time flying around and recharging and not a whole lot of time getting anything done and things will be done inefficiently and you'll be burning lots of power that isn't really necessary so it's important to keep that in check but it is useful to expand them to several robo ports in one area in certain situations then the robo port itself we're going to drop in half a stack of each type of robot and if we look in here there's also several Stacks available for repair packs for the construction robots to go out and repair things if that's needed within range of the logistic network. And then the several stacks for robots as well. More than you're going to need for what this RoboPort is actually going to be able to service in terms of repairing them. And then we have two chests. There'll be more later, but these are the two that are around with the advent of robots. The red passive provider chest and the yellow storage chest. So with the passive provider, it looks like a normal chest when we open this up and look at it. And this is the lowest priority source. It is never a destination. In other words, robots will never bring items to these. They'll be loaded by inserters or whatever, or you can put items in yourself. But robots will come to these. When they can't find an item anywhere else, they'll look in a passive provider chest to come pick it up. And passive because these chests will not ask the robots to come and take the items that are in them. They're perfectly okay with items sitting in there for the long term indefinitely. Storage are a little bit different. They are both a source and a destination. As a source, they are one step up on the chain, so more of a medium priority for robots to come and get items from. They'll look in storage before they look in passive provider. But they're also the bottom rung of the ladder on destination, so robots will bring items to them. Another difference, and this is a key one in making your whole system work smoothly, and we'll get into this a little bit later, is the logistics filter. So we can tell them to only have, say, medium electric poles or whatever other item we may wish to have and only store that item here, and they wouldn't bring anything else to this if you set that order in place. Time to see these robots in action, beginning with the construction robot, which is the cheapest one to build and to research. This is just a generic dummy setup to get us started on seeing how it works. And we've got items for those backups stored in our chests. Before we even unlocked robots, we were familiar with things like putting down ghost buildings with shift click, or we also have the copy tool, control C. We can select this, we can put this down anywhere, control V to paste. We can left click this, and this time we don't have to actually put the structures down ourselves. We just watch while the robots take care of that for us. Thank you. But as we continue to grow in size and complexity, it can be very useful to have a number of different schematics set up, save them, organize them, and that's what all of these new tools are. They come with the construction robots research. 
And once you've researched them in one save, they're available to you in any save. So we'll start with a blueprint, Alt-B. Select this again. And now we have this dialog that comes up. So let's give this a name. And then if we look at the icons down there, we can change these to whatever we might wish. Put a reactor on there, put some steam, whatever. Whatever we want to use to identify this blueprint we're making, we can also put in a description here. If you end up using blueprints a lot, what you'll have happen is you'll have dozens of them, maybe hundreds of them, and you'll forget maybe what some of them are for, so this can really help you with that identification. Then the snap to grid here is a more advanced concept that I don't think we will need for the purposes of this series. But it can be used for situations where maybe things are really far apart in your factory, you want them to line up, train stations is a popular one, although there can be other purposes for it. So you just turn on snap to grid and you can set various offsets to make sure things are aligned and they aren't off and all of your flow is working as you want it to do. Then the components and the preview here allow us to just edit. As it says, right click to remove, left click to restore. So I can turn this off, bring it back. I can do it here for all of the transport belts at once, bring them back. But I think we like it as it is. So then we can just put this on our quick bar and we can use it wherever we decide that we want to. And once again, they'll place everything down. Excellent. Now there's also ways to organize many different blueprints. For example, we have the blueprint book. We can right click and open that and then we can set a name here as we might wish. We can drag our blueprints into here. But worth noting, if you destroy this blueprint book, you also destroy any blueprints that were in it. So you can really ruin a bunch of your work if you're not careful about doing that. Then we also have the blueprint library. And the My Blueprints section, this is going to save blueprints between any of your saves. So really useful if you come up with a bunch of solutions in one game, you want to use some of them in another game, you don't have to lay everything out again. This can really help with that. Game Blueprints is just for the current save. So there's a lots of different options for organizing and saving them as you might wish. Then we have the Upgrade Planner. And by default, this will try to upgrade everything. This is an unfiltered one, so you can see down below it's trying to turn regular transport belts into fast ones. And then it also wants to turn the yellow inserters into blue inserters, assembly machine 2 into assembly machine 3, even though we haven't invented that one yet. It always wants to upgrade everything to the maximum level. But let's say we didn't want to do that. Let's say, we'll just place this here. Right click it to edit, and we only want to upgrade the transport belts to fast transport belts. We want to leave the rest alone. Well, if I do that, see it's only upgrading those. But this does not work. We've got this error message here. Eight entities are missing the material for construction. And the reason for that is it is trying to draw from these chests which do not have fast transport belts. I have fast transport belts in my inventory, and I can use that by using the personal RoboPort, which I have one set up in my armor here. Typically, I would not use this with just modular armor until I upgraded my armor, but you can do it however you want, and we'll get to the more advanced armor later. So if I have my personal RoboPort, plus I need to have robots, and I need to have the material here, then they can build it for me. The reason they're not doing it now is we do not have the personal RoboPort toggled on, Alt-R. But if I make that happen, there we go. Then we also have the Deconstruction Planner. And we can use this very simply, unfiltered one again, to just take down anything within a selection. But again, we have the filtered options. So, whitelist, only select those items, blacklist, ignore any items that you have there, and then we have the trees and rocks only option. So let's say we set it to that. Well, then, it's going to do nothing here, but if we go find some trees, then that will work just fine. 
So that's the uh, basic ways to operate with all of these tools and construction robots. But logistics are going to be used a little bit differently. Now we have this logistics and auto trash section and also these trash slots. So these are what we want to tell the logistics robots to just get rid of. We don't want this anymore. So let's say we put our stone in there. And they're just throwing them all in the storage for us because we told them to get rid of them. Now, let's take something like the wood here. So we have a couple of different settings we can put on here. This is the minimum amount we want to always have available to us. And then the maximum, so above that, we want them to get rid of. So let's say we want to always have 10, but not as many as 15 or whatever. Moves the other seven into trash. And again, they go off into storage. Then, of course, they can bring items to us as well. For example, if we grab our transport belts, let's say we want a thousand of them. Well, there's not enough for a thousand, but they're bringing us all of them. Notice all of them out of both these chests now are in our inventory, but still not enough. It will continue to be red here until this actually fills up and it gives us what we want. So really easy way to control your inventory. And if you have a good storage system set up, then logistics robots can handle all of that for you and make your life a lot easier. Turning our attention now to more practical applications of how we might want to use robots in our factory, we're gonna try remote building. We are in the north side of the factory where we build the robot frames and we're going to build solar on the other end of the factory without moving. Doing that using a blueprint that is from JD Plays. It's not of my creation. I'll have a link to the video showing that in the description below. But down here, I've just got the basics set up and we can just plant this down. Notice the red in the lower right of the blueprint there. That's an obstruction from a tree. We'll say tree is in the way if you just left click, but if you shift left click, then the robots will clean up that tree or if there's other obstructions, they'll just not put down that part of the blueprint and it'll still let you place it. So we have our RoboPort down here with robots, of course, and we've got materials in this past provider chest, and we've got a storage chest here for them to put the wood in that they're picking up. And away the construction robots go. And so this would simply be a matter if we wanted to expand our solar periodically this way, or expand any other part of the factory, we would just need a chest of some sort with the materials that are needed delivered them to that somehow, transport belts, drive them down there ourselves, train, however we might want to do that. But this can all be building while we are off doing other things. We don't have to laboriously put down hundreds of different items. And I think this is somewhere in the vicinity of seven megawatts of power that you can get from this particular blueprint. And so it's a nice little bump and then, okay, Maybe we want more, so we can just hook it up next to each other. And with the RoboPort being in the middle of this blueprint, it's a nice technique to allow you to simply hook them up, and you've got a small gap to walk through in between, and it's not so large that that RoboPort can't reach, and so it's simply going to connect to the next item that's needed. And it could be expanded you know, infinitely. And of course, you could redesign it, maybe use a little bit different ratio, maybe knock out a row or two to let a vehicle go through. There's room enough here to walk, of course, but a vehicle would be tight. However, you might want to go about making your life easier in the factory. On the logistics side, I've done an overhaul of the supply depot, and this is fairly time consuming, but I think also very much worth it. On all the inserters, we have instructions, how much to put in at most to our storage chests. And these are all filtered storage chests is the key point. So there's no restricted blocks, but only one item per chest, and each chest is unique. And this is not original to me. Nilaus has popularized this a lot. I know other players have done it. But the point is, if I lay down a bunch of fast transport belts, just as one example, over my regular transport belts, now I have a bunch of extra transport belts in my inventory. So they can either be cluttering it up, or I can find somewhere to store it manually, or if I just have a bunch of storage chests, items are just going to get mixed and matched in there. But doing it this way, the only place they can go is right here. And then once they go back in here, they're recycled into the system, which is good. And also, this will shut off and stop making more and stop consuming more resources. So it's very effective that way. 
We also have eight robo ports set up. I've done a bit of a four corners thing here with two in each spot. And you can see by the overview there, all of our supply depot is now covered with RoboPort coverage. Then in my personal logistics setups, I've added all sorts of items in here, what I think I'm gonna want for the time being. And again, this is very much personal preference, what numbers you like to use, experiment with it, find what works well for you. All of these trash slots were filled automatically because I have too many of these items, whereas the one in red means I don't have enough of those and they're gonna to try to bring me more. Nothing's happening now because we don't have any robots in the robo ports, but I'm gonna throw them in there in a moment. This two wood here is a test because I don't have any storage chest for wood in this area. I've got it down by where we are doing the loading station for the oil and the train so that we can get the fuel in there. So if this wood stays here, it means I haven't screwed up and I don't have any unfiltered storage chests that are just storing whatever. So we're gonna drop in our logistics robots, let them go to work. And of course the point here is that we don't come back and hunt around for various items that we need when we return to the supply depot. We are not trying to find a specific thing and then, oh, I forgot to get inserters or I forgot to get power poles or radars or whatever it is. We just set instructions the robots follow the instructions. When the robots are done flying around, that means that our work is finished. And if we don't like what we have, we simply adjust the numbers and go back. And notice all of my trash is gone, except for the wood. So all of that worked effectively, and that tells us that I don't have any unfiltered storage chests. Very easy to miss one, but we are all set on that. And we've got a bit of a recharging queue, of course, this is taking a lot of electricity. You can see if we just have these eight robo ports in this area on their minimum consumption, that's 400 kilowatts. We got a couple of these going full speed with recharging. Now we're between eight and nine megawatts. So we are fine on it for now, but that's something you definitely got to watch the power draw. I also want to take a look really quickly at concrete, which I haven't done yet simply because I wanted to wait for robots to do it. So we're gonna grab our refined concrete out of here. This is 150% walking speed, regular concrete is 130%. You can use the hazard concrete, which has the cool yellow aesthetic. If you want to increase or decrease the paint, if you're putting this down manually, you just plus to make that square bigger, minus to make it smaller. Let's just get a quick demonstration of how much it helps. So if we just run along this, that's our normal moving speed. And then noticeably faster running over it. Now, vehicles get a lesser bonus from this. The lighter vehicles get more and the heavier vehicles don't get quite as much of a bonus, but it still helps. I don't like to do a whole ton of concrete because, well, obviously it's gonna consume resources and cause pollution just to build it. And then also anywhere you put concrete, you're going to have no absorption of pollution from that area because you're covering up the ground, which would absorb it. But I do like to have it in fairly sparing, modest amounts. In areas like this, we're gonna travel a lot. It's nice to get through them quicker. We're we'll going up and down the bus quite a bit and speeding that up can be nice. So we're going to put the concrete back in here then. I'm gonna use a blueprint for this. But I do want to eventually expand it to where at least this whole area of supply depot is covered and gradually move up the bus further. So I've got a blueprint here, which is a decent little square of over 300 concrete required. So lots of resources required to go high on this. And I'm just going to plop this down here and here. And of course we do need to make sure that we actually get our construction robots in and now they're gonna go off to work. And this is gonna be gradual, but we don't need to be in a hurry with it. Because just this bit here is already gonna be consuming all of the concrete that we've gotten saved up. And then over time, I'll periodically come down here and lay down more. In a little while, we should have a very nice setup speeding our passage along. 
So I hope this has all been useful to everybody on the subject of robots and that they make a little more sense to you now, what you can use them for in the factory, gave you some ideas. And nuclear power will be coming up next episode. See you then.